Hi guys, this is Technoli, and today I've got that shootout video. I've got the shootout with the Ryzen 5 3600 and the i5 Intel 9400. So, anybody want to lay any bets on this one? I got my little bench set up here. I've been doing benchmarks all day long. So, we're going to see... Who comes out ahead on this one? Okay guys, let's get started with this little i5-9400. Now we are using a graphics card in here because the Ryzen system, the onboard graphics are not supported in Hackintosh. So we have to be apples and apples on this. So I'm using this uh, XFX Radeon RX 570 graphics card with four gigabyte of RAM. So we're gonna use the same card on both systems. Let's go ahead and get into Geekbench. And we'll run this, and then we'll come back with its results. Okay guys, we're coming down to the end on this uh, Geekbench 5 score. So let's see where we are. Okay, so we're at 1023 on a single and 50 49 on a multi let's compare that to some other hackintosh or some other macintosh mac computers so 10 23 okay here's a 10 21 and a 10 17 macbook pro 16 inch late 2019 Wow, this is an i7-9550, 6 cores, worth the same score. And then here's an iMac from 2017, an i5-76. So we're right there. What we should be, $430 computer, okay? All right, then 5049, 5049. So we're right between these two. This is an iMac 27 inch, early 2019, and uh, wow, unbelievable scores. What's an iMac 27 inch from early 2019? What did it sell for originally new? Woo, all right. Let us move on to our next scores. All right, let's go ahead and let's go into Cinebench. Okay, we'll just go ahead and run this and see what we end up with. All right, we're coming down to the end of it here. Let's see if we're any good. Okay, so we got a little decent score here, 2388. Compare that to what you guys have, uh, like uh, right under an i7-7700, so that's where we would think it would be. These are decent scores, you know, for the price of this computer. But how will it compare to the Ryzen 5 3600? That's what we want to see. All right, let's move on to logic. Close out of here. And uh, let's double click on this logic, logic benchmark test. Now, if you haven't seen other shootouts with uh, me, this test will run up to 128 tracks of a software synthesizer. And it also has, right here's your synth. And then it has these five plugins on each channel and a limiter just on the stereo bus. So let's go up here. Um, there we go. So I've got 24 tracks on right now. Now let's go over here to our preferences and audio. And let's see, we've got it set to 1024. Let's set it down to 64. Let's set it down to 32. Let's go crazy. All right, now this is only a six core processor. Now, let's go to our project settings and let's change this to 96K. I know, that's crazy, but we're going to do it anyways. Let's see if we can run 
24 tracks. Okay? But first, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to get the load meter up. Okay, there we go. All right, let's get going. Okay. 24 tracks, 96K. I'm pegged out on five of my cores. I got one left. Um, 24 tracks. Not bad. You know, this is a $430 computer. So uh, that is really kind of impressive. 96 kilo kilohertz. So let's see if we can push it any further. Let me throw on two more tracks. All right, let's back it up and let's hit it again. Uh, no, 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 no. I guess it only, let's see, 25 tracks? Can we get 25 tracks out of it? Can we get 25? Come on, come on, come on. Okay. We squeezed one more track out of it. So 25 tracks. All right, let's change that to 48. Um, let's go over here. All right, let's change it to 48 kilohertz and see how many more tracks we can load up. So let's, let's just look at it at 20, 25 tracks. Oh, not even 50%. Play that all day long. Let's just jump it up to 48 tracks. Okay. All right, so there we're hitting the meters pretty good, but we still got a little wiggle up there and we still got this core that's still worth uh, working. So can we get more out of it? Let's go up to 60 tracks, 60 tracks guys, 430 bucks. Come on, that's kind of pushing it, right? No, it won't go. All right, let's drop off uh, three. So what do we have here? 57 tracks. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, I'm holding it 57. I'm pegged. Um, the CPU fan is not, you know, nothing's getting any worse. And uh, we're able to get 57. Can I squeak one more track out of it? 58. We're at 32 buffers, guys. 32 buffers. Yeah, I got 58 out of it. 58 tracks at 48. All right, I think that that is a good analogy. Now, I have tried this at 1024 buffers, and I can maybe get one more track. It's it's not that big of a difference. I don't I don't know why it normally is, but it's not on this Hackintosh. In the Hackintosh world, it seems to be that way with all of them. So, I'm going to write it down. Logic we got 25 at 96 and we've got 58 which makes sense 58 at 48 all right perfect let's go over here to final cut all right there we go and we have that uh, Bruce X test that everybody seems to use I'm not a guru when it comes to this stuff guys I'm sorry um, that I can't be more detailed and I've asked a couple of you guys to tell me what test you want me to run, but nobody got back to me. But anywho, um, here is our seconds. Now let me get a stopwatch. I'm gonna go over here to Google, type in stopwatch. Okay, Google, of course. Okay, so here we go. And I've already got one on here, so let me, let me delete that one. Okay, here we go. Master file. And on the settings, guys, I've got uh, Apple ProRes 422, which is default. And the resolution on this is 5120 by 2700. So I'm going to try to be as quick as I can with this. But watch the clock before the final screen comes up, the rendered screen comes up, and see if you can tell how many seconds it is because I can't get there quick enough. So let's watch it together. Save and click. All right. 17, 27%, 45%. Watch that clock. 
I'll try to catch it, but I don't think I can. That's green. 73, 85%. Ah, I saw 19 seconds. I saw 19 seconds, guys. What, did you see 19 seconds? 19 seconds on uh, Bruce. Okay, perfect. Now, I want to run over to Adobe Premiere, and I want to show you guys something that I found was quite interesting. Let me go out of here. Okay, guys, let's go with Premiere, and I'm going to show you guys the same video I did on another shootout. It's just one of my videos, and the only thing I can really show you is just how long it takes to render a video because like I say, I'm not a pro at this, uh, at editing videos. I'm not uh, a guru. So let's see here. This was that little nook. Yeah, let's open that project up. So what I wanted to show you guys was that when I will just, if I come over here and I just hit the space bar, it'll start playing without any issues at all. But when I tested this on the Ryzen, I would hit the space bar and it would hesitate. And that drove me crazy. Now the rendering on the Ryzen was wonderful, but that little stupid thing just hitting that space bar, or even if you click play, it just hesitates for a, not even a second. But it's enough to where you feel it and it, it gets your flow messed up, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's real smooth. That's not an issue. Let me make this large. So, this isn't an issue. I'm running at half resolution right now. Let's see if I can crank it up to full. Now this is just with that Radeon RX 570 graphics card. But, you know, you can get a lot of work done on this computer. I wouldn't say that's bad. Now, the thing that drives me crazy is the rendering time. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to export. Export media. And I've got it set. I'm going to say match source. Uh, let's see. I'm going to set it to H264. Because that's all I know. <laughs> and I'm going to set it. I'm just going to have it save it on the desktop. And I'll just say test. Okay. Save. And let's start the export and see what kind of time we're looking at. I have found that this export time is pretty close to being this, the, the correct number. It, but it depends. If you're going to, you know, surf the web or do something in the background, then no, it's not going to be accurate. But this is showing about 31 minutes, 32 minutes remaining. Let's see, is it going to crank up anymore? And this, I think, is about a 50-minute video. So, you know, that's not horrible. This took the estimated time on this on a iMac 2013 with a i7 processor was an hour and 10 minutes. So we're cutting it in half on, well, if you add in the graphics card on this computer, so you're 120 plus 430, so you're at 5, 550. A $560 computer that can do all of this work. You can run Final Cut. You can run Adobe Premiere. You know, it's Intel. You're not going to have any issues with Adobe products that I, I hear all of you telling me um, that they can cause problems. And there are some fixes on the internet, but, you know, maybe with Adobe products you stay away from Ryzen. I don't know. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if you're having problems with Ryzen with Adobe or if you have a fix. Maybe that'll help us all. And, uh, but you know, 560 bucks 
for this computer and the Ryzen is going to be about the same money and um, you can do a lot with this computer. It is really amazing with a Hackintosh computer. So I'm really excited about this. So um, I don't know guys, what do you think? Can the Intel stand up to the Ryzen? Will Ryzen win or will Intel win? Let's get to the Ryzen system and find out. Okay guys, so we're on the Ryzen. Let me show you right here. Now this shows an Intel, but <laughs> it is a 3.6. And there's our RAM and there's our graphics card. Let's get started with Geekbench. And let's see what kind of scores we can get out of it. As soon as it's done, we'll come back. Okay guys, coming down to the end of it here. Now we're just running the Ryzen 5 3600 and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And I've got an NVMe in both of them. And I've got the Radeon RX 570. All right. Ooh, okay. So quite a bit better score on single and multi. 1217 Intel was 1023 and 6488 and Intel was 5049. Wow, big differences. All right, let's go down here and look at 1217. Woo, way up here. MacBook Pro late 2019. That's a better score than the MacBook Pro with a Xeon. How could that even be? That's incredible. Here's an iMac from early 2019, 1138, but we're 12, 1217. Let's look at the multi. 6488, 6488. So we're in between these two, MacBook Pro, late 2019 and i9 oh my god they're both i9s one's a 15 inch and one's a 16 inch wow all right guys uh whoo that's pretty crazy okay let's run uh cinebench let's see what's going to happen with cinebench accept and run I just wanted to show you guys how fast this thing is going in Cinebench this is really fast okay let's see we're coming to the end of it here oh my god look at that 36 36 the Intel was 2388. Wow. That is above a Ryzen 7 1700X 8 core. It's at above a Intel Xeon 2697. An awesome score compared to the Intel, which was 2388. All right, guys, let's get on to, let's see, Logic Pro. For all you guys out there that have always wanted to know, how is Ryzen on Logic? Okay guys, so I've got 24 tracks on right now. Now let me turn on the meters. Okay, there's load meters. Oh, wow, look at all those cores. Now we still have the same exact test here. We got the software synth plugin, and we've got five plugins right here for effects, EQ, multiplier, chorus, reverb, and then we got a limiter on the bus. And let's see, we're gonna run audio. We're gonna run at 32 buffers, and we are going to be on our little scarlet and let's see what else okay I want to go over here I want to go over here and change this 
to 96. 96 kilohertz. All right, perfect. All right, let's run this. Okay, so that's putting a little pressure on it. Um, but boy, that's about 75%. Ooh, okay. Let's jump it up to 40 tracks. Remember on the Intel, it would run 25 tracks at 96. Let's see what happens. Wow, 40 tracks. 40 tracks, that's 15 more tracks. Can we squeeze a couple more out of it? There's 42. 42, it's holding. Nope, there it is. All right, guys, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call it 40 tracks. All right, 40 at 96. Now let's test 48. Let's see what kind of a difference, how many more tracks we can get at 48. Let it take effect. There we go. I'm just going to go and check it again and make sure it's still there. Yeah, 48. Okay. All right, let's just go ahead and run uh, the 42 tracks here. Oh, yeah. 50%. Okay, let's jump it up to, uh, let's just jump it up to 100 tracks. Okay, there's 100 tracks. Still at 32 buffers. Oh, no, no go. No go. Let's drop down four tracks. Let's see. There's, there's 96 tracks. Can we do it? 96 tracks, 96, it's holding. Yep. Okay. 96 tracks at 48. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. All right. Well, that tells us that Logic runs better on a Ryzen than it does on an Intel. That's crazy. All right, guys, let's go out of here and let's move on to Final Cut. All right, let's run it. And we're gonna run the same, this Bruce X test. And let me get a stopwatch. Stop watch. There was one right there. All right. So let's go over here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pull that little timer down there. Here. Master file settings. We got the Apple ProRes 422 5120 by 2700. Let's hit it. Let's save and start. All right, seven, 17 percent. Looks like it might be close. Intel was 19 seconds. Okay, fans are kicking on. 61. Watch this one right here. Oh, wow. Intel beat it by about two seconds. I think it was 20, right at 20 or 21 seconds. Yeah, so uh, we're about the same on that. About a second difference. That's crazy. So on graphics, uh, looks like so far we're about the same. Okay, let's jump over to Adobe Premiere. Now we're gonna run the same test or the same uh, video, one of my videos and uh, see if the render time is any better. So let me open up, that was that little Nook project. 
right here. Okay, there it is. Nook Hackintosh project. Open it up. Let's see how bad this one is. Okay, guys, so here we are. And uh, super smooth. Let me turn that audio off. That's going to drive everybody crazy. Okay, so really smooth. Let's run it at full like we did the other one. Let's stretch this down. Guys, I'm just not, I'm new at this video editing stuff. <laughs> All right, so there we go. A lot. My videos don't have a lot of movement. This front part does because we're live camera. And that's smooth. That's really smooth. Really nice. Okay, so let's just look at that rendering because that's what was bothering me the most was how long it was taken to render. All right, so we're gonna set this to H264. We're gonna match source and we're gonna change this to test and I'm just gonna save it on the desktop. All right, save and let's export. The other one was like 33 or 34 minutes. Oh, this is better already, but let's wait here a second because it might 19 minutes. Yeah, you know, the experiments that I've done, and I did the same experiment on the Ryzen 9 3900, and it was much faster on renders than the i9 9900K. This is still holding at 19 minutes. And I know this is not an exact science. You know, it should go, I should be timing it till the end of the video, but it, it's pretty true if long as I'm not running something in the background. I'm down to 18 minutes now. Um, so I think this is a pretty good judge of what we're looking at because this is an enormously much faster computer with Adobe Premiere on editing. Okay, but what I wanted to show you guys, and I almost forgot, was does this thing pause when I click the space bar? Okay, well, let's cancel out of here. Cancel. Remember I was complaining about that? So I'm going to hit it. No, it doesn't. Wow. On the i9-3900, it would pause. But here on the Ryzen, I click it, watch, click, and there's no pause at all. It was driving me crazy on the 3900. And this is just with this inexpensive RX 570. I know it's more, more CPU intensive than probably graphics, but that's, that's really nice. That's not pausing like the uh, like the i9 was, or the uh, Ryzen 9, not the i9, the i9 was smooth as silk. So, I don't know guys, I think Ryzen beats it, and I don't think anybody is surprised at that. We're looking at the same price boxes here, about $560 for either one, and I don't see any issues with running either one. And I have to tell you guys that I have not had any, any Hackintosh that I have built and I've done a video on, I've not had any of them fail, like just auto rebooting or shutting down. You know, I have issues like sleep doesn't work and that's real common on Ryzen's. Um, and I'll have issues like the microphone input won't work on Ryzen. You know, so I have to get this little $8 USB thing and I stick it in a USB and I can plug in a microphone. Um, so all, of, all the systems I'm building and showing you guys are stable. I'm not having any issues with it. And I've had a lot of you guys ask me, but how stable is it? It's a Hackintosh. Well, yeah, it is a Hackintosh and we can't expect it to be perfect. We can't expect everything to work flawlessly 
or everyone would buy one and nobody would buy a Mac. But as far as stable, as far as running and doing daily tasks and everything, I'm just, they're, they're running great, guys. So, you know, I think you're safe to, to spend the money for parts to build one um, and give it a try. See what you think. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, it really surprised me on some of these uh, benchmarks. But uh, Ryzen comes out on top. And uh, let's see how many of you guys rush out and buy one. <laughs> All right. We'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.